Aaron Pierce, raise your hand. Raise your hand, Aaron Pierce. Everyone, I have a personal request. Something I don't normally ask people when I just meet them, but you seem pretty cool. I think we can get away with it. <clears throat> All right. <sighs> Raise your hand if, in the past 24 hours, you've been breathing. Good for most of you. Some of you I'm worried about. <laughs> one more, one more big ask. <sighs> Raise your hand if you've ever been to Vancouver, Canada. <laughs> ah, some well-traveled folks around here. You made it across the water. Fantastic. Most of you are cooperative. I appreciate that. But I did see a few who were a little nervous, maybe a little afraid about raising their hand, and that worries me. Fellow Toastmasters, contest chair, welcome guests, judges, friends. Why are people afraid of raising their hand? I teach classes, and I often like to start with something like, raise your hand if you have hands. <laughs> and all too often, I get something like this. <laughs> Serious, stone cold, nothing. And I don't get it. Do they think I'm going to ship them off to war? This was actually a draft. Gotcha! <laughs> Not me, but... One group I never have this issue with, ever, is kids. Kids are amazing. They will raise their hand for anything. They will raise their hand for everything. I have had kids raise their hand to tell me that they don't know the answer to my question. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. Thank you for your input. I have had kids raise their hand when I say, who wants to present their homework first? Like me, after they just told me they did not do their homework. <sighs> You know what, I'm going to give you all a life hack because kids just love to be involved. If you ever want something from the kitchen but are way too lazy to go get it, find a kid, say, oh, raise your hand. They're like, yes. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, I have a volunteer. Go get me a glass of water. <laughs> and they will do it. They're like, yes, I am your man, woman, or child. I will get this done for you. <laughs> they want to be involved. They want to be included. And they love it. And that's great for parents to know. But I love it as a teacher because it means that kids learn so fast. And yeah, part of that is biology, I'll admit, but a huge part is how often they're willing to raise their hand. I'll give you an example. I had a student, about six years old, Jane. I remember the first time I called Jane on stage, I said, come on up, Jane, come on up. And she came up, nervous. Her shoulders were touching her ears. And then she turned and she stood at attention <laughs> and stared at her audience for two minutes and then walked away. <laughs> she didn't say a word. That's most people's biggest fear when they come up here. They're like, I got to, oh, blank. <laughs> but the special thing about Jane and the special thing about kids is that she didn't stop raising her hand. Every time I said, I have a question for the class, She'd raise her hand. When I said, I need a volunteer, she'd raise her hand. And if I said, I need a first speaker, you better believe that Jane's hand nearly hit the ceiling. <laughs> and the beauty of it is, it worked. She started saying words. Yeah, sure, she'd still come up nervous <laughs> with her ears touching her shoulders, but there'd be words peppered throughout the speech peeking in occasionally. And yeah, sure, she'd still stand at attention, and maybe she'd stare into the soul of her audience who'd be too afraid to break eye contact. <laughs> but every week, the silence got a little shorter until on one of the last days of class, I called her up, come on up, Jane, come on up. And she came up, but this time, her shoulders and ears were miles apart. She wasn't nervous, she was confident. She walked on, and when she turned, she stood not at attention, but with confidence. She was relaxed. But then she did the most amazing thing of all. She started speaking. And what had started 
as these drowning oceans of silence became these ideas and pauses that drew her audience in with every word. And she started connecting with everyone in the room more. She'd done the impossible. And as a teacher, this is 100% one of my proudest moments. But it's not really fair to call it a moment. Because for Jane, this isn't a moment. This isn't just a two-minute chunk of her life that'll be forgotten. This was an accumulation of action. Every week, she'd raise her hand. Every week, she'd get involved. Every week, she'd say more words with less silence. I think we all have a lesson to take from here, here from Jane, don't you? I know for me, when I was studying at UBC, there were times when I definitely didn't raise my hand. In fact, there were classes where I never raised my hand. I didn't ask or answer any questions, and consequently, I don't remember a thing from those classes, which is too bad because I paid for them. <laughs> but I don't think I'm alone in this, because when I asked some of you if you breathed, you were like, I don't need to breathe, Aaron. Oh, idiot. <laughs> so I know we have a lesson to take here from Jane. And here's the real big ask for you. It's next time you're given a chance, just put up your hand, give it a shot. Because for Jane, if she hadn't been so dedicated to getting her hand in the air at every chance she got, she'd still be standing in front of us with her shoulders touching her ears at attention in silence. The real big ask is just try something new. Put your hand in the air like you just don't care. Next time someone says, I have a question for the audience, raise your hand. Next time someone says, I need a volunteer, yep, that's me. Next time someone says, I have a bad idea, why not? <laughs> you will learn something, and that's worth it to me. Let's try this one more time. Next time you're given an opportunity to try something new, who's going to raise their hand? I know I will.